That'll do it for the Major League Baseball portion of this podcast. I want to thank you guys for listening. Hope I entertained you a little bit. And with that, I love baseball. There's going to be much more baseball conversation moving forward on Behind the Pen, so stay tuned for that. But I want to transition now into Chicago Bulls basketball. I, You know what? Wow. Wow. That's, I guess, what I have to say about the Bulls right now because going into this season, really into the offseason, actually, let me go back even further. Last year, by the deadline, I've repeated myself a lot here on the show, and if you guys have been listening, you know where I'm going with this. Uh, the direction of this team. Boy, I was in question of the direction of this team. Wanted them to trade Powell. They had an opportunity to do so. Failed. Said they were going to resign him. They didn't. He walked. Now he's on San Antonio. Got no value for him. They were labeled championship contenders going into that season. Missed the playoffs in a weak uh, Eastern Conference. Then you move on to the offseason, okay? They trade Derrick Rose, and I'm not going to go into this because I do this every single show, but I have to because it just pisses me off so much. Trade Derrick Rose, get some nice return. I like Robin Lopez, what I've seen so far. And so, okay, you're moving in the right direction. You're getting younger. Keep Jimmy Butler. I'm okay with that. But then they go out and sign Rajon Rondo and Dwayne Wade. Now, Dwayne Wade was more, to me, a signing of, well, okay, you're marketable. You're extremely marketable with Dwayne Wade. He's uh, the face, really, one of the major faces of the NBA. Does so much for the community as well. Just really a likable guy, right? And, of course, he's got skill. Of course, he's got skill. But he's, he's, he's getting old. He's got injury history. Obviously, that's a concern. But he's still a quality player. I had a problem with the signing of Rajon Rondo. I don't like Rajon Rondo, and I still don't. I hope he fails in Chicago, and I hope he's out of here after year one. Because they have guys like Jerry and Grant who I'm excited to, I'm excited to watch. Hopefully he gets meaningful minutes, and I'll get to him soon. But I just wanted to talk about the direction of the Bulls before I get into this conversation. I was ready for them to get into a, sort of a retool mood, right? in, in quotes, retool. That's what... You know, the the brain trust there in Garpack said and called it. But I was ready for them to go in a direction where you rely on young players, you get young players, get draft picks, and kind of build from within and go from there. They ended up trading Tony Snell, who was garbage, to absolutely terrible. Michael Carter-Williams, so far, really haven't... There's really nothing... I mean, he is what he is. He's just like a poor man's Rajon Rondo, sort of, in his play style. I, I like he's young, I guess. I can't complain. The, this roster right now, and without Derrick Rose, I'll tell you what, if you didn't think Jimmy Butler and Derrick Rose were not getting along last year and it attributed to the fact that they were bad, well, then this year tells you that that has to be at least somewhat true because this looks like an entirely different team without Derrick Rose. And yeah, you add in a guy like Dwayne Wade, a positive locker room presence, and you give the entire locker room over to Jimmy Butler completely and away from a pissed off Joakim Noah and Derrick Rose who was too busy listening to his body to even think about being a team leader so whatever glad Derrick Rose is gone hopefully forever he never comes back to Chicago but honestly I, I like it I li- it's a little refreshing here and I say that because it gives Fred Hoiberg a chance to do what he wants in terms of coaching style right I'm seeing why they were so interested in Fred Hoiberg and his system, this run-and-gun system, this pacing system where they push the floor consistently, but they rely on shooters. Yes, they rely on shooters. But they have playmakers on this team, and especially like when the shot clock's running down, you notice this. They're like, Dwayne, Dwayne, Jimmy, Jimmy, shoot, do something, uh, whatever, do something, anything. And that's kind of their offense, and it worries me. A little bit in that sense because when you move on later into the game and you're playing possession by possession, right? It's like a one, two, one possession game and you're just having empty ones, right? You got to have, I don't know. know, That's that's something I kind of noticed and I'm a little worried about, skeptical with the Chicago Bulls at this point. And two, it's sort of easy to defend them in certain situations. If you put four men with a foot in the paint, it's like, okay. What are you going to do now? You can't shoot. I think Rajon Rondo is the worst uh, field goal percentage in the NBA to this point. And obviously, he's not a shooter. I just don't like Rajon Rondo. His value is over-exaggerated, in my opinion. Yeah, he's a, he's a great passer, but he sucks on defense now. He's nowhere near the defender he was in Boston. He gambles a lot on that side of the ball, goes for steals wildly a lot. And he can't shoot. He can't do anything. He doesn't really score either anymore, but... Whatever, I guess. I We have to deal with him for one year as Bulls fans, but whatever. That's fine. 
But I look at this roster, and it's guys like Jerry and Grant who's getting me excited. And I want to stay positive because I'm going to bring up Bobby Portis in a minute, and I just don't know about him. Uh, anyway, and then you have guys like Cristiano Felicio. Cristiano Felicio should be getting more minutes over Bobby Portis, in my opinion. I like I. I don't know how limited his offensive game is, but he plays hard. He knows what he's doing on the defensive side of the ball, and you need that. And he's uh, a solid presence underneath uh, that the basket in the front court in terms of rebounding and, and positioning on the defensive side specifically. On offense, his game's going to take time to develop. That's uh, an obvious thing. But I, I like what I see from... I'm a big fan of Felicio. Free Felicio, guys. So I'm going to keep saying it. Doug McDermott. McDermott's dealing with a concussion right now, but... He's a player under Fred Hoiberg who strive, who will strive. The, Hoiberg is a coach that will play to his strength and try and kind of manipulate the offensive sets to get him in positions to succeed, and I like that. McDermott isn't limited to just being a off-the-ball shooter or uh, you know, a jump shot sort of guy. He's not relied on that specifically. He can get to the hole. He, he was dunking last year. White man can get up there, Doug McDermott. I love it. Love it. Those are young players. You know, Desmond Valentine, I'm not sure if he's going to get meaningful minutes anytime soon. I feel like he's got to work his way onto the court. We'll see what happens. I am excited about the pick. Don't get me wrong. Well, I, we just got to let him progress through the motions here in the NBA because you can't, unless you're a, a game-changing type talent, you're not going to find success immediately in the NBA. So it's okay. You know, Denzel Valentine... He will probably do well in this offense. He's got a, a, a solid skill set there. And I look at Taj Gibson. I know he's not a young player, but I would argue that he was their, the Chicago Bulls' most productive player last season. And he's showing it again this year. He does so much for you on both ends of the floor. So, you know what? It isn't all that bad. I was very, very down on the Chicago Bulls going into this season, although I was on record of saying I think they could be a six seed. I think they well for sure. I think they're going to make the playoffs, and I've been saying that ever since they signed Rondo and Wade. They were they, this is a playoff team for sure, and maybe they're good enough to be a six seed. Right now, they're doing they're doing quite well. I look at the uh, overall stats, and they're eleventh in scoring at one hundred and six per game through twelve. What it is now on November seventeenth, I believe they're playing the Jazz as I'm doing this podcast, so that may fluctuate a little bit in the coming days. But no, honestly, like. So far, so good. I can't really have any... I'm not really complaining too much about the Chicago Bulls, except really Bobby Portis. Is he good, guys? You tell me. Because I'm not sure yet. Like, last year, I was like, whoa, whoa, nice. Like, Bobby Portis, aggressive. Doing things where he's creating his own shot, and whenever he had the ball in his hands, he would shoot. So I'm like, okay, might as well, because this team's garbage, so go. You know, just play. But right now, I don't know. I'm not seeing... I'm seeing a lot of inexperience. He's getting beat down low. A, and then you have Nikola Miritich, stretch four. I know the game's evolved to the point where you need a stretch four on your roster, but is Miritich that guy? I feel like he's just so inconsistent on the offensive side, and he doesn't have a position, right? On uh, he's just terrible defensively. Like I, he's just a cone out there, but he doesn't he doesn't compensate for the lack of defense that he provides. So obviously, there's going to be questions with this Bulls team going throughout the year. If they deal with any sort of injuries, it's going to be tough. Like, they could go through a stretch where they struggle to win games, even at the bottom of the East. So, uh, it's early. I'm encouraged. I like Jerry and Grant. I was so happy to see him succeed in the start that he was able to have uh, while Rajon Rondo is nursing an ankle injury. Hey, take your time, Rondo, by the way. You can stay out as long as you want. I mean, they, they're not suffering without you. And by the way... I guess the Bulls are a little uh, flexible now with the uh, headband rule that they had in place. I bet you Ben Wallace is a little pissed off, huh? As I would be. Anyway, if I was Ben Wallace, yeah, I'd be pissed. I'd be like, what the hell, man? I, my, uh, I, do, I love Ben Wallace, by the way. But he had his dreads and then he had his afro. It just didn't look right without a headband, right? And the Bulls were like, no, no, we're not letting you wear it. So, nah. hey, whatever. Whatever. But yeah, no, going back to the Bulls conversation. They're going to be a playoff team, in my opinion, but right now it's really early in the season, and you guys tell me what you saw in the comments below so far through 12 games. I'm encouraged. Like I said, Jerry and Grant stepped in for Rajon Rondo, had a nice game, one point below his career high with uh, 18. The other night had five steals. That's a career high. Played Damian Lillard really tightly throughout the entire contest. I saw that. 
you know, I appreciate good defense, especially since Thibodeau, you know, left. I haven't really seen much of it, especially not last year. I appreciate good defense and effort on the other side of the floor. I mean, my favorite player in the history of all time is Kirk Heinrich, so you know where I stand on that. So, you know what? Jerry Grant, keep an eye on him. I, I feel like he's one of those young guards that maybe can turn into something. But they have a nice little mix, I would say, of young players trying to find their way onto this roster, their role onto this roster, and guys that like Taj Gibson. Now, Miritich in his third year. You know, he's going to be important for the Bulls to have any success. And Robin Lopez. Robin Lopez gives you consistency down low in that front court. I like the move to acquire him. Can't really complain. Dwayne Wade, stay healthy, man. Need you out there. Jimmy Butler, you want to be paid as this big-time leader? You think you're as good as these top five, top ten players in the NBA? Prove it to me because I'm not sold yet. I'll tell you that. I mean, he's a really good player, but I don't think he's elite yet. It's just me. You guys can attack me all you want. Brad, that's Bulls conversation for today on Behind the Pen. I hope you enjoyed.